Chapter 42 Adelmo's heart raced as he heard Samara's words. The shock of discovering a long-lost cousin was already overwhelming. But now, there was a mysterious uncle who had supposedly died years ago. His mind was filled with questions, and he couldn't help but feel a mix of confusion and curiosity. His eyes widened as he tried to process the information. How could his grandfather, and he had been unaware of this uncle's existence? It seemed like a secret that had been buried deep within their family history. Adelmo's thoughts raced, wondering what other hidden truths might be waiting to be uncovered. Samara's revelation about finding a letter from her father after his death only added to the intrigue. Adelmo couldn't help but wonder what secrets the letter held and why her father had chosen to keep them hidden. It was as if a veil had been lifted, revealing a hidden world that Adelmo had never known existed. As Samara continued to speak, Adelmo's mind was filled with images of the terrifying encounter she had described. The thought of his cousin being attacked by a pack of vampires sent shivers down his spine. He couldn't fathom the fear and confusion she must have experienced as a young child, facing such a supernatural threat. In that moment, Adelmo realized that their lives were intertwined in ways he had never imagined. The discovery of their shared bloodline and the dark secrets that surrounded it brought a sense of urgency to their newfound connection. They would have to navigate this hidden world together, uncovering the truth and protecting each other from the dangers that lurked in the shadows. Ignoring the harsh reality of their deaths was a defense mechanism I used to shield myself from the painful truth. By convincing myself that they perished in a car accident, I created a false narrative that was easier for me to digest. However, this facade crumbled when I had a first-hand encounter with the grim reality. Seeing the truth up close forced me to confront the unsettling facts I had been avoiding. The moment of reckoning came when I could no longer deny the undeniable. Witnessing the stark truth shattered the illusions I had constructed in my mind. It was a sobering experience that made me realize the gravity of the situation. I had to grapple with the fact that my father's attempts to distance himself from that world were not without reason. Coming to terms with the reality of their demise was a pivotal moment of clarity for me. It was a harsh awakening that made me understand the depth of my father's sacrifices and the dangers he sought to protect us from. The truth was a bitter pill to swallow, but it also brought a newfound appreciation for the sacrifices made by those who came before me. It was a turning point that made me reassess my own perceptions and priorities. After that, my sole purpose in life became seeking revenge for the loss of my parents. However, it was during this journey that she had an epiphany. She realized that she was actually continuing the unfinished legacy of her father, embracing her true destiny. This realization brought a mix of emotions as she understood the weight of her responsibility and the sacrifices she would have to make. Adelmo, upon hearing her story, expressed his sympathy, saying, I can relate to your pain. I also lost my parents at a young age, leaving me with only my grandfather as a guardian. However, when I turned 18, I made the decision to move to America in pursuit of a better future. I wanted to leave behind the shadows of my past and focus on completing my education. Little did I know that fate had other plans for me. He continued, sharing his own unexpected journey, saying, Almost a year ago, strange occurrences began unfolding in the city I had settled in. It was as if the past I had tried to escape was catching up with me. I found myself being dragged back into a world I thought I had left behind. These inexplicable events forced me to confront my own demons and face the reality that sometimes... No matter how hard we try to escape our past, it has a way of finding us. Adelmo's story highlighted the unpredictable nature of life and the challenges one must face when confronted with unexpected circumstances. Samara glanced at Lana, her face filled with confusion, and asked, So, who exactly are you? Lana, with a hint of apology in her voice, responded, I apologize for Adelmo's forgetfulness. I'm Lana, his girlfriend. Samara, trying to be polite, replied, Nice to meet you. Lana, though cordial, couldn't help but express her disappointment, saying, I wish we could have met under better circumstances. 
As they continued their conversation, they couldn't help but notice the swords they all held. These swords were intricately designed, each one unique to their respective family bloodlines. It was clear that these weapons held great significance to them. Samara's attention was drawn to the three swords that were specifically meant for their bloodline. She couldn't help but wonder if their grandfather's passing had something to do with it, but she decided not to pry and kept her questions to herself. Samara's curiosity grew as she observed the swords in their hands. Each sword seemed to possess a distinct aura, reflecting the heritage and traditions of their respective families. The intricate designs etched onto the blades told stories of bravery, honor, and sacrifice. It was evident that these swords were not mere weapons, but symbols of their bloodline's legacy. Samara couldn't help but feel a sense of pride and responsibility as she held her own family's sword. She knew that these swords were not to be taken lightly, as they represented a deep connection to their ancestors and the values they held dear. Although Samara was tempted to inquire about the significance of the swords and the circumstances surrounding their grandfather's passing, she decided to tread lightly. She didn't want to intrude on Lana and Adelmo's personal matters, especially during their first meeting. Instead, she chose to respect their privacy and focus on getting to know Lana better. Samara understood that sometimes it was best to let people share their stories in their own time and she was willing to patiently wait for the right moment to learn more about the swords and the family history they held. 